What's up, people? What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to the King Kane way. It's me, King Kane. <laughs> yeah. 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 Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back. Mm, I've been so motherfucking me busy. Working. Doing that. Working on the lingerie line. Really putting my all into who I'm trying to become. You know, I have dreams of sitting with the Allure Swanks, the the luxury laws, the Colin Carters of the business. So I have been trying to move a little different, tone it down physically a tad. And um, elevate, elevation. So anywho, I just smoked me an L. I had some badass gorditas from uh, some badass gorditas from this little uh, Mexican restaurant across the street. Rice and beans and things. So anywho, I'm gonna hop into this review over Love and Hip Hop Atlanta season eight episode seventeen. Uh, I, I, I can't stress this enough. I'm so ready for this shit to be over. I'm ready for this reunion to come so I can do what I need to do and move forward. I will not be reviewing any more Loving Hip Hops on my channel. Um, it's just not something that I want to do any longer. So, that's that. But anywho, Kirk and Rashida are working on their bistro. And Kirk is there. Is that the bistro? They're doing some type of inspection. Some type of work is going on. It's getting it together. That's what's up. So, when they get that shit open, I'm definitely going to go check it out. I think it's called the Frost Bistro. Bistro. So, I think that's really cute. Jock is scra scrappy come. Um, to me, Kirk and his confessional, he basically had said something along the lines of, how him and Rashida are going to always get the bag and always get the money, woo, woo, woo. So, to me, it kind of came off as if they're just, you know, they're basically a, 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 a couple who's only together for the bag. And I feel like, I mean, I get it, you know. And then Rashida even opened up about, you know, infidelities in their past on her end um, earlier in the season. So... You know, at the end of the day, I think they're just married together. It's a business partnership. It is a contract. Um, but I don't think the love is there. I think that it's 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 put on. It's acted. Um, and it's just weird. It's just weird. Um, anywho, next we see Rashida. She invites Erica and Carly to her mom's event. She's having a mother-daughter brunch uh, where she just wants people to come with your, with your daughter and let's just have some mother daughter key key time. Erica won't be able to make it because she's obviously going to give birth to the twins. And then Erica goes on to talk about Imani's birthday party and basically how um, her Bambi's mom, Cece, aka Thunder Thighs. How she went up to Mignon, which is Erica's mama, talking about, yeah, it's me. Yeah, it's me. First of all, y'all two grown old bitches shouldn't have no type of beef. Mignon is Erica's mom, Imani's grandmother, those twins' grandmother. Mignon ain't got nothing to do with CC, or she shouldn't. Who gives a fuck? I'm sure Bambi loved Imani and respect Imani. I'm sure Imani loves her some Bambi. Because if she didn't, why would she not why would she say she want all her family together for her birthday party? Y'all some rules with the girl birthday party up there going crazy, acting a fool. Erica said Scrappy started going off. The little girl took off running. She was just sad, couldn't take it. And I'm just like, y'all some ghetto ass bitches. To sit up here, I mean, they didn't show it, but Erica described it. It seemed very, very much ghetto. 
uh, backyard barbecue tees. Like, come on now. Like, have some type of cool. This is this little girl's 14th birthday for crying out loud. And everybody wants to talk about how they're a great parent. And how goddamn me, they child is their world. But you bitches can't even act right. It's pathetic. Honestly. Anywho. Job talks about his issues with Kendra. How he really wants her. She's not fucking with him. Carly, uh, she basically wants to know who the fuck is on this guest list. Rashida, I don't know what, uh, who you're inviting. You know I don't fuck with Pooh. Rashida was like, girl, Pooh gonna be here, but they don't need to be none of that extra shit in front of y'all kids. That was that. Next, we see Jock. He's meeting with Sharonda, Cena, Big Jolly Ass, Carly Red, and Shakana. Well, her big ass legs. Legs can bust the ball. It comes out that Sharonda started the Jock situation. Jock is mad as fuck. He goes off. He's tired of these bitches in his motherfucking business. He t checks Cena. He checks Carly. She trying to play it out, trying to leave all cute. Shakana trying to separate Jock from Sharonda. Her big, short legged ass falls, tumbles, etc., etc. It was fucking funny. Her big ass rolled. Big roly poly oly head ass bitch. I'm just, I've never been here for Shakana. I just think that she's just here for the kicks and giggles, but it really ain't no kicks and giggles. You know, it's just like lame. You know? It's fucking lame, bro. At the end of the day, Jock, you need to fucking relax because these are women. You breaking glass, you throwing shit. You need to calm your motherfucking ass down. I know you tired of these hoes, but you done roasted these hoes. Read these hoes and get up and dip. You don't say what the fuck you had to say. You spoke your piece. God damn me. So run over there talking about she heard. Yada, yada, yada. Next, we see Big Tokyo and her mama. They talk about, you know, her grandma passing. And, you know, her mama's just very sweet. She loves on her. Uh, this scene definitely brought tears to my eyes. I can definitely relate to what Tokyo is saying because my grandmother passed in October. And I feel like I haven't really dealt with it because as soon as my grandma died that same month, I had a fashion show that I had styled. So after her funeral, you know what I'm saying, I'm still... Got to get back to Dallas and, and make sure that these designers have their stuff on time, that these models are good, hairstylists, makeup artists, make sure everything is good and copacetic. And then after that, you know, in this business, in this game, you have to keep going, you have to keep growing. So I, I always wanted to stay doing some things, and then I was working on the bougie effect, and, you know, it's just a lot. You know, it's, it, it, it's a lot, and then I'm working two jobs, and... You know, so it, I can definitely relate to not being able to fully process, you know, the death of her grandmother because she said they were very close. I can totally relate to that, that feeling of loss and, and just pain. It's a very painful situation. Extremely painful. Um, next we see Jock goes to talk to uh, Mama D. Um, I'm sorry, Scrappy goes to talk to Mama D. Um, she basically tells him the story about what happened at the birthday party and Jock's acting like he wasn't there. When Erica just said, your big swole ass was over there acting a the fool and that's why the daughter ran out crying. Jock is just upset. I'm sorry, Scrappy is upset because he feel like, damn, I just had a fucking car wreck. All y'all girls want to do is just fucking beef. Like, goddamn, what about me? What about how I feel? What about what's best for me? What about how I feel? What about me? What about me? Yes, dream girls. But no, honestly, like, what about him? He's just like, damn, he needs to get some help. Because his mental is really off right now. Like, y'all doing too much. I'm going through too much. My friend still fucking hurt from the fucking car wreck. My foot was crushed. 
and understand that mama didn't need them too old to be acting that ignorant. CC big wide leg ass too old to be acting like that too. Y'all are all motherfucking grandparents at the end of the day. Act accordingly. Period. Next we see Carly and her daughter. Her daughter's fucking gorgeous. Carly daughter tells her that she stopped, that she's taking a break from school because she's been getting questioned about Carly and Pooh's allegations. Um, maybe because they're still probably filming as the show is on. That's the only way I can see her daughter like getting approached in school because my idea of reality TV is you film ahead of time put it out there and you're not filming as it's going because I don't know if that's a storyline that the daughter's just trying to say to quit school but if it's not the case and they've still been filming while it's on maybe the daughter has been getting questions a lot about it so she's over it she can't take it she tells her daughter that she's taking a break from Mo she tells her not to settle for less. Um, that's just what it is. Next we see Pooh. I'm like, come through Pooh. Come through Pooh. Her daughter's super cute. Super educated. They're hanging out at the pool. They're kicking. -ki the daughter just doesn't understand. Like, y'all was cool. And Pooh's just like, well, girl. She turned all these bitches against me. She's like, these girls don't want to fuck with me. And they don't even know me. You know, Pooh's just very childish about the situation. Pooh has always been a bit immature to me. Uh, but I do like Pooh. I think she brings that spice to the show because the show is lagging and is lacking. So anyway, the daughter's college educated. Daughter has a cute shape. Um, Pooh said that they're envy of me when she meant to say they're envious of me. Who learned to slow down and use your words. Her daughter tells her that she needs to relax and calm down. And they'll be arguing with these women because she is seasoned. And I was like, yes, daughter. Get your mother together. With your all your degrees, daughter. All your degrees. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Little muffin looking ass. You like a little muppet. But all your degrees, bitch. You told your mama she was seasoned. Who you are old. Everybody, your husband told you you're older than these women. Your daughter done told you you're seasoned. Don't do that good to calm down, bitch. I'm just... Uh, now. Hell. Uh, next we see Erica had the twins. They're sickly. Prayers to the twins. Prayers to Erica. Jock goes and pours the sword out to Kendra. Kendra's so cute in this scene to me. However, she's still not fucking with Jock. She don't have time. She just needs her time to heal. Where was she this event? Everyone is there with their with their mothers. Um, and everyone is going around uh, with the mic to the daughters say something to their mother, what they're appreciative for, what they love. Everybody goes around and, and does these commitments to their mother. Then after Pooh daughter goes. She comes and like, oh, that's very well acted. But I feel like, shit, if that's my truth with my mama, if my mama a hoe and a freak in the streets, but she's a magnificent mother provider, teaches me the right thing, I can't help what she do in the streets. But as a mother, what she's giving me, what she's instilled in me is something. And Pooh says she got three daughters who are all college educated and doing well. And this daughter who's on the show owns her own hair salon. And she's in school for her doctorate or to be a lawyer or something. So, that's what that is. So, Shakana, fat, aqua body ass, gonna say, oh, that was very well rehearsed. Girl, shut the fuck up, bitch. Anybody ask you nothing, hoe? All right, Shakana, period. No, she said very well performed. Girl, fuck you. So anyways, Carly gets the mic and she tells everybody about the lie detector test and about how her daughter had to quit school and everything that's been proved against her was false. Carly, why are you bringing it up right now at this event? 
You just stepped up looking old and crying, looking like Michael Jackson. Bitch, you look scary as fuck. You like a fucking corpse, bitch. Get your shit together, Carly. I'm not living for it right now. Um, Pooh stands up. She's like, girl, so would you get a lot of take the best test about, bitch? We want there. That shit could be fabricated. Like, what the fuck is you talking about? Oh, hell breaks loose. Carly's daughter is trying to fight. Um, 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 Pooh. Pooh and her daughter get up. They're trying to get at Carly's daughter. Carly's daughter's hype. She's talking shit. She's ready to fight. Carly is holding her daughter. <laughs> Carly looked crazy. This was some color. Purple. Me and you shall never part type tease. Um, it was a lot to take in. And it was weird. But it was hella funny. Um, I think Carly needs to stay away from Pooh. I'm, and, and Mo, and she needs to go on a vacation, get her diet right, get her makeup right, because she's looking very awkward these days. Next, we see Pooh and her daughter. They've been escorted out. The daughter talking shit, talking about, you finished college in four. It doesn't take seven. First of all, little Muppet looking bitch, congratulations on all of your accolades and accomplishments, but everybody got a different story. You don't know people's stories. Some people start college, quit, go back, switch majors, do this, go to a different school. Some credits don't transfer. Bitch, you don't know everybody's story. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Just because you're there don't mean that another bitch can't get there. At the end of the day, Carly's daughter slays you physically. Yeah, Carly's, Carly's daughter's outfits could have been a little better. However, you know, um, um, but you, 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 you give Candace Dillard tease. So fuck you. You know, take your accolades and move on. Um, so anyway, guys, that's my review over Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Season 8, Episode 17. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel. Follow me on all of my social media in the comment section. Peace.